Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Science Galaxy. I am Manjunath. Let me begin this video by asking some pertinent questions which I think all the data scientists out there should know the answers for and have the clarity of the answers so that when you embark on the model development in the real world it will help you certainly. Let's get to the questions themselves. Here is the first question. Have you been grappling with the fact that you have several variables in your data set and wondering which subset of the variables should be part of the model development and which ones to omit? Have you been also thinking about the fact that you wish you knew a principle or set of approaches and best practices for the model development itself? Have you also been asking questions to develop simpler models? Have you also been thinking about explainability of the model in the larger scheme of things? In doing so, have you identified the stakeholders or the end users for the model? Have you also want to take advantage of the simpler models and want to explore the power of simplicity through model development? Ah, some more questions. Have you heard principle of parsimony? Yes, you heard it right. Principle of parsimony. You know what parsimony means. You want to know why we follow principle of parsimony. If this sounds like you and you have been grappling with similar questions, then you are at the right place. Please watch this video till the end where I will give not just definitive answers to all those questions that I had talked about just now, but also talk about an important cautionary tale. Keep a watch on it. Without much ado, let's get started, shall we? Let me now explain the fundamental idea behind principle of parsimony. Parsimony in English means miserly or being stingy. What does it mean? Simply put, doing more with the less is parsimony. What do you mean by doing more with the less? Instead of taking all the variables available in your data set, take minimalist number of variables as a subset of the variables from the underlying data set and build the models. What does it do? It enables you to build simpler models which, is, which will also be simpler and increases the explainability of the model. What do I mean? You may be building a regression model or a classification model. So what you need to do while building a regression like regression model, you need to take the approach of parsimony and that is to say take small number of important independent variables and build a phenomenon for regression. That phenomenon could be explaining let us say sales or revenue predictions or take a subset of the variables, you could also be building a classification model for your target. For example, you could be looking at building predictive models for identifying defaulters and non-defaulters. The fundamental notion or the fundamental principle is twinfold. One is to build simpler models with minimum number of variables. Second is enhancing the explainability of the models. Next, I'm going to talk on the advantages of the simpler models before that a piece of information. In my next video, I am going to use principle of parsimony and explain inside out how do we go about building regression models and classification models. Watch out for more from this channel. Realize principle of parsimony leads to simpler models and simpler models have many advantages. Let us just examine few important advantages of simpler models which are very very pertinent to know for each one of us. Simpler models generalizes better the data set instead of memorizing the training data. What does it mean? Realize model development is all about feeding the model or the machine learning technique with the underlying training data set and the model learns from the training data set and then we'll be able to deduce that into in a manner of expression a mathematical form called inference model which is generic enough in the sense if you take an unseen data or the test data you can plug in the values for the variables from the test data into the generic version of the model and the model can give you the output let us say predicts correctly who is defaulter who is not a defaulter so this way simpler models generalizes better so what do you mean by memorizing training data? The other term in the machine learning world is also called overfitting. What it means memorizing from the training data is simply this. Your model is very, very specific to the data on which it is trained on. That simply means it does exceedingly good job on the training data for predictions, but does a pathetic job on the testing data or the unseen data. Realize model validation, model performance is established on the testing data set and not on the training data set. Any 
model that is overfitting is doing a pathetic job of predicting on the test data set and in real world scenario it is garbage just to put it mildly simpler models also enables you to avoid the curse of not just the overfitting but also the curse of dimensionality what is curse of dimensionality if you have too many variables into your data set and you will get into a situation called curse of dimensionality i'm going to explain in my subsequent videos these things in greater detail what the more number of variables in the data set or the dimensions in the data set could also pose a challenge of multicollinearity especially for regression models it is a strict no because it is critical assumption and violation of one of the critical assumptions of regression i'm going to talk about these things when i talk about regression techniques later simpler models also helps you to focus on important predictors the idea is to focus on minimalist number of variables and hence focus on what is needed what is must have variables what are important variables in terms of the independent variables themselves and simpler models also enable you to explain easily that's because by definition it is simple and hence explainability is more for simpler models when you want to talk to your stakeholders or explain to your stakeholders about your phenomenon or response are also easy for you to sell being a simpler model to your business users and to stakeholders simpler models are also easy to deliver to the clients easy to deploy in the production environment and hence easy to maintain contrast this with a complex model it is difficult to deploy it is difficult to maintain any which way you look at it taking principle of parsimony or parsimonious approach to model development has many advantages when you are looking at simpler models this is where the power of simplicity comes to bear and you can leverage the power of simplicity through the principle of parsimony remember i alluded to what is called cautionary tale sometime back in this video so now is the time to talk about that cautionary tale so here is my request and also my recommendation for you the data scientists out there do not start with boosting methods for improving the performance of the model for achieving performance levels of the model at desirable levels follow the simpler approach that i talked about follow the principle of parsimony leverage the advantages of simpler mo models avoid overfitting avoid curse of dimensionality etc so when you are looking at analyzing the model from time to time realize model development is iterative so you have to go through several iterations for, for improvising on the models so when you are evaluating the model what could happen model could possibly perform as intended and as desired everything is good you are done if the model is not performing as intended or as desired again do not start with the boosting methods for improving the performance that is the cautionary tale i want to leave you with having said that you could do three or four things to my mind to actually thrash down certain issues and then improve the performance drastically what is the first one look at more business scenario try and understand more business scenario in the event your model is not performing as expected try and understand and appreciate the scenarios as a function of the domain many a times there could be gaps in the domain understanding and hence business scenarios would be needed for you to understand and see it in the context of the domain better in doing so gather or acquire more data when you acquire more data it will enable you to look at the data and understand the problem better and you could possibly come up with what is called feature engineering feature engineering simply means it is your own variable that you as a data scientist is created as part of your engineering endeavor which making use of the information available in the other variables i am saying this from experience feature engineering plays a critical role for developing the robust models the difference between an ordinary model and a robust model is the feature engineered variables themselves many a times so feature engineering is very very important look at feature engineering of the variables as part of improvement of the model performance what else you could do remember i already said model development is iterative so perform feature engineering look at more business scenarios ask for more data possibly as a function of the domain think of introducing some more important variables and then see if the model performance improves if for some reason at the end of it a worst case scenario model performance is still not at the expected levels of performance you could look at boosting methods for further improvement i hope my explanation and answers to several of those questions has helped you in understanding the issues better or getting the clarity around the questions that are important better so that when you go and make an attempt to build models in the real world it will come in handy 
thanks for watching if you have not subscribed already to my channel please subscribe like and share with your friends of course don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications this is manjanath signing off and i'll talk to you in my next video